Hello, greetings everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Craig Nolan. I'm Daniel Pineda. <laughs> hey, Daniel and Daniel my Pineda. name's Adele Quo. And here we go with our uh, one, two, three, third show in January 2018. It's going fast, Holy right? cow, flying right by here. We're almost into... Uh, <laughs> Spring is on the way. It's yeah. on the, and a warm we'll see up, what the groundhog says. That warm up we talked about. <laughs> groundhog Day is coming. Yes, indeed it is. And spring can't be far behind. So thanks for joining us for this edition of the Arlington Weekly News here at AIM. Um, we have uh, the usual stuff, uh, in case you haven't noticed, in case you haven't been watching our news and community bulletin board segments. And Adele Quo is here with another installment of It's, it's Easy Being, being green. green. And she has a voice this time. And <laughs> yeah, getting over that cold Adele's weather. Adele's got her voice back. Uh, what wonders a week in the Caribbean will do, right? <laughs> <laughs> on yes. assignment, Craig. Okay, on, on assignment. assignment. That's very good. Always on assignment. Nice That's how rumors back. get started. <laughs> our, our CBB Community Bulletin Board file, as I mentioned, uh, a roll-in uh, from Denise. Our review, movie and theater reviewer, and she's talking about Anne of Green Gables tonight, our News for Seniors segment, and also uh, a discussion with Charlie Clark and his uh, hidden history of Arlington. That's, uh, that's our show. Sounds interesting. But before we begin, a social media reminder from Senor Pene. Absolutely, Mr. <laughs> Null. And you can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our mm -hmm. YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News. And the number one. Also, Facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News, and also on the radio, right, Mr. Nolan? Indeed we are. You can hear the audio from our little show here on WERA 96.7 LPFM. Check us out uh, on the radio. Well, here we go, as promised. News for seniors. Glasses on a little early tonight. Uh, first of our news items, a pair of Gunston Middle School students has been awarded second prize at the AT&T Film Awards Festival. Sophie Salazar and Megan Leahy, Leahy, sorry, Megan, uh, Leahy, take two, take three, created a film about ending the online abuse known as cyberbullying. Their film outlines and advocates a series of principles which they call good digital citizenship. The reward was uh, given in the best short film youth category, and it earned them $2,000 worth of camera equipment. In addition, they'll also get an opportunity to refine their uh, movie-making skills at a film-making workshop. So congratulations <coughs> to those uh, two young early filmmakers at Gunston Middle. Daniel. That's great news, right, Craig? Absolutely. Well, a 60-year-old man was struck by a white SUV as he attempted to cross at the intersection of Washington Boulevard and North Stafford Street. The incident occurred around 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, January the 23rd. The man suffered a head wound, but his injuries were not life-threatening. He was treated shortly thereafter. Police have recently stepped up traffic enforcement at the intersection, but reports of drivers ignoring pedestrians in the crosswalks continue. All right, Daniel, and also here's a, uh, an easier, a little nicer news item. It's about a tree trunk originally set for, for removal that has instead been carved into a replica, a replica, take two, uh, a Bavarian-style castle. The work was done by a local artist, and the finished piece is about eight feet tall. The tree castle is located at the intersection of North Underwood Street and North 26th Street here in Arlington near Tuckahoe Elementary. The homeowners uh, have remained silent about the project, so viewers are encouraged to respect their privacy. Still, it uh, might be worth your while to take a look at the car and if you happen to be uh, driving in the neighborhood over that way around Tucker Hole Elementary. It just uh, is a kind of a neat looking cool thing, so check <laughs> it out if you're over there That's by cool. Tucker Hole Elementary. It is cool. All right, Daniel. Well, Craig, it may seem a bit early to think about Mardi Gras, but there's a special item we want you to know about. It's an opportunity to march with the Education Theater Company in the Clarendon Mardi Gras Parade. The event is set for Tuesday. That's February the 13th at 6.30 p.m. The Educational Theater Company is also known as ETC, and they're celebrating 20 years of providing performing arts participation to young people. The kids are provided with the help and resources to write, produce, and perform their own original music plays. 
to find out more information, go to their website. That's educationaltheatercompany.org. All right, thanks, Daniel. And as promised, our uh, CBB Community Bulletin Board file is coming up right after we hear from Adele and another installment of It's, it's Easy Being Green. Green. Here's Adele back in voice. Tonight. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> thanks. It is great to have this voice back. So my name's Adele Quo, and it's Easy Being Green. Although temperatures have dropped far below normal, you've not been teleported if you spotted the geometric life-size paper penguin sculpture at Reagan National Airport this week. Ten traveling emperor penguin sculptures, naturally well attired and outfitted with suitcases, have been spotted in cosmopolitan cities around the world from Barcelona to Hamburg and to New Delhi, far, far away from their native and Arctic environment. Arriving at international airports, traveling on public transportation, hitching rides, and enjoying selfies at iconic landmarks, the penguins are on the march worldwide to build awareness via photos and social media to help Greenpeace launch its new campaign to create an Antarctic ocean sanctuary that becomes a safe haven for penguins, whales, and seals, and much more. Protecting a healthy marine wildlife refuge ensures healthy oceans will soak up huge amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to help fight climate change. Because even though Antarctica's land is protected as a continent, the ocean is not protected. The seas around Antarctica are some of the most important in the world, with a huge diversity of species, and the nutrient-rich waters surrounding Antarctica sustain 75% of the world's marine life because the water is transported by an enormous current into the northern hemisphere. Antarctica, the penguin's native habitat, has been more or less out of reach of humans at the bottom of the world, so it's hard to imagine there are human impact threats like climate change, ocean acidification, and overfishing that pose a serious threat to penguins and other Antarctic marine life. Yet 11 of the 18 species of penguins are already endangered, and the famous emperor penguin is edging closer to becoming an endangered species. The emperor penguin colony featured in the award-winning March of the Penguin movies has declined by 50% since the 1970s. If you're a millennial, you may be too young to recollect back in the summer of 1999, the colorful and artistic cows on parade that charged Chicago by storm. During its 12-year stampede, the decorated bovines raised more than $20 million for charitable organizations around the world. So move on over, cows. It's time to support the March of the Penguins 2018. Share the penguin photos to spread awareness. Join the movement to protect Antarctica. It's www.protecttheantarctic.org and safe travels to our 10 penguins. So remember, it's easy being green and let's support the establishment of an Antarctic ocean sanctuary. Mm, good idea. I've seen mm. those bovines in Chicago. <laughs> Me too. Twenty million, not too shabby. So if the penguins, I, know. <laughs> I had no idea they raised that if much money. The penguins money. can do anything close to I that. I hope uh, that they help. And they they got the right thing going there. That's that's a good idea. I Excellent. Like it. March of the Penguins, twenty eighteen. March right. of the Penguins, twenty eighteen. Exciting. Thanks, Adele. We appreciate it. Thank you. Here we go, as promised now, our CBB Community Bulletin Board file. Well, here's something that some viewers may not have known. As it turns out, there is a USA Pickleball Association. Pickleball. Isn't that fun to say? Not only that, they say they have more than 100,000 members, players in the United States, making pickleball one of the fastest growing sports in the country. So what is pickleball anyway? Well, to find out, you can join a representative from Source Physical Therapy for a discussion on the history of the game, the physical demands, and the health and benefits of pickleball. You'll also get some tips on preparation and how to uh, avoid injuries. This all takes place Tuesday, January 30, at 11 in the morning, 11 till noon, at Langston Brown Community and Senior Center and Park. They're located at 2121 North Culpeper Street, Street, Take Two Street, here in Arlington. Should be on your screen there. For more information, give Elizabeth Poole a call at this number, 703-228-6300.
pickleball. It's pickleball, yeah, it is, it is so fun to say. <laughs> Your yeah. turn, Daniel. You well, can say it if you want. Pickleball, <laughs> yeah, I'll say it all the time. Well, here's an interesting book discussion featuring author Laura Shannone. The book is called The Dogs of Avalon. It features Marian Fitzgibbon, a strong-willed Irish woman who takes on a series of increasingly risky missions in order to rescue animals in need. The inspiration came from the author's adoption of an Irish sight hound and an unhappy discovery. Racing greyhounds who are no longer able to compete and win have been abandoned and destroyed for decades. Come and hear the author's thoughts as she discusses this compelling story. The event will take place on Thursday, that's February the 1st, from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at the Arlington Central Library. That's located at 1015 North Quincy Street, Arlington, Virginia. Mr. Nolan. <laughs> Gracias. Uh, also in our CBB file, uh, here's another attraction uh, from the people at Crafter Dark. It's an opportunity to learn how to create stained glass style panels. It's safer than the actual stained glass because it uses tissue paper and plexiglass. This is a hands-on experience, so you'll come away with your very own panel to display on your windowsill. This is coming up on Wednesday, January 31st from 7 till 8.45 in the p.m. portion of the day at Shirlington Branch Library. They're located at 4200 Campbell Avenue here in Arlington. The program is FRWE free for adults, but registration is required, so they're asking you to call in advance for that. Give them a call at this number. should be on your screen. And also in your ears here, 703-228-6545. Daniel. Well, Craig, here's an event for the whole family. It's called Red Carpet Movie Night at the Mill. Here's how it works. First, you do your star turn on the mill's red carpet. Then you settle in with your own blanket for an indoor drive-in movie experience. Finally, you watch the scene along with the animated movie scene. Family nights are free. That's right, free. But kids 10 and under must be accompanied by an adult. The show goes on February the 2nd from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Arlington Mill Community and Senior Center. That's located at 909 South Dinwiddie Street in Arlington, Virginia. For more information, give them a call. That's at 703-228-4773. All right, Daniel, and uh, we've got our news for seniors coming up, so stick around. Don't go away. That's coming up right after we hear from our theater reviewer, Denise Pringle, and her spin on Anne of Green Gables. Here's Denise. If the bitter cold of our recent January weather has made you crave any sort of warmth imaginable, the Little Theater of Alexandria has just the thing for you. It's heartwarming production of Anne of Green Gables, the musical. It is based on the novel by Lucy Maud Montgomery that tells the story of a brother and sister who decide to take in a young orphan boy to help with the farm work. Instead, they get Anne Shirley, a girl with red hair and freckles and a wit and imagination that transforms their lives in Avonlea, Prince Edward Island, Canada, in the early 1900s. LTA veteran director Michael J. Baker, Jr., has assembled a large and talented cast, and with the help of choreographer Christina Cayer, has them dancing across the stage flawlessly. Cassie Cope plays the plucky Anne, who easily charms the hearts of Tony Gilbert as Matthew Cuthbert, who convinces his sister to keep the girl, and Christopher Miller as Gilbert Blythe, the classmate who is immediately smitten with her but is rather clumsy when he tries to express his fondness. Anna Marie Shockley is Diana Barry, the kindred spirit and immediate best friend of Anne, and Michelle Ballard plays Marilla Cuthbert, the more reticent of the would-be parental siblings. These five actors carry the core of the action, but more than two dozen others round out the cast of townspeople and school children, which each actor contributing their best effort to breathe life and warmth into the inhabitants of Avonlea. As always, the set design by Mary Hutzler captures the idyllic town with a definite emphasis on the green gables that give the farm its name. My first glimpse of the projection screen left me skeptical, but this too was a perfect choice. 
It captured the buggy ride to and from the station and charmingly framed the early moments of the bonding of Anne and Matthew and was whisked from sight when its job was done. Anne of Green Gables, the musical, plays at the Little Theater of Alexandria through February 3rd. It hits all the right notes in its story of small town friendships and love and loss, and even a touch of tedious gossip to keep things real. It's as comforting as a hot chocolate on a cold day. Treat yourself. I'm Denise Pringle. Now back to the news desk. All right. Thanks, Denise. We appreciate it. Thank Her you, Denise. Spin on Anne of Green Gables. That's a classic. Okay, as promised, here we go now. Our News for Seniors segment. Here's information on a book swap. Walter Reed Senior Center is hosting a book swap. They're accept accepting literary classics, bestsellers, fiction, nonfiction, history, and mysteries, plus educational magazines. The books will be used in the center's lending library, and the overage, the leftover books, will be donated to a local charity. This takes place on Tuesday, January 30, at 11 in the morning, about 11 till noon. They're located at 2909 16th Street South here in Arlington. For more information, call Walter Reed at this number, 703-228-0955. Daniel. Well, Craig, the Northern Virginia Senior Olympics Committee met recently and have agreed to add three more events to the games, which will be held on September the 15th through the 26th Throughout Northern Virginia, the new events are Canasta, Croquet, and Beach Ball Volleyball. Arlington Weekly News will have someone on a future broadcast to explain that last event. For more Senior Olympic news, check the website. That's at nvso.us. Craig. And Daniel, also in uh, News for Seniors file, Legal Services of Northern Virginia provides free, FRWE free, confidential legal assistance to eligible seniors on a variety of issues uh, like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, housing law, and insurance. Program is set for Thursday, February 1, between 9.30 and 11.30 in the a.m. at Langston Brown Senior Center. They're located at 2121 North Culpeper Street, right there at Culpeper and Lee Highway here in Arlington. To make an appointment and uh, get more information, call Legal Services directly at 703-778-6800. Daniel. Well, Craig, Arlington seniors 55 years of age and older can access hundreds of programs at the county's five senior centers by acquiring a 55-plus pass for an annual fee of $20. Drop by a center for more information and for a copy of the 55 plus guide. It's a 36 page magazine published every other month listing all of the senior center programs and activities. You can call Judy Masomni at 703-228-4721. Thanks so much Judy Masomni for providing the senior stories for this week. And before we go to the roll in, just a reminder, you can email us at arlingtonweeklynews at gmail.com. Please let us know if there's something you saw that you liked or something that you saw that you didn't like or something you didn't see that you want to see. Just let us know. We would love to hear from you. Right, Craig? Absolutely. We'd like to hear from you. Just thought I'd hold this up here. You can yeah. get your own, very own copy right of the 55 Plus Guide. It has lots of information in it about all the programs for seniors here in Arlington. Right. And it's like 30 bucks for a year. Now's awesome. a good time to renew or join. Uh, 60 bucks for a family household uh, membership, and uh, it's a pretty good deal. And they got all sorts of stuff right. going on with for all the seniors at all the senior centers here in Arlington. 36 so uh, pages out. of very important information. Lots of good stuff. Okay, we'll be back with bye-bye uh, and sign-off right after we uh, hear some information about Arlington's history from Charlie Clark. Cherrydale neighborhood, age zero to seven, and then my parents moved over to Chain Bridge. Uh, I attended Mount Olivet <coughs> Kindergarten, uh, Cherrydale Elementary for about a year and a half, and then I attended James Madison Elementary, which is of course now a senior center. Uh, Williamsburg Junior High, now Williamsburg Middle School, and Yorktown High School, which has a completely different building. Now. 
Uh, I wrote for the uh, Century, the Yorktown paper, and uh, I used several uh, items from the Century and the uh, yearbook that went into in this book. Um, Ellen and I uh, settled, uh, after college, we settled in Alexandria, but uh, we moved back to Arlington in 1993, where we moved into the East Falls Church neighborhood. And I confess that in my column writing, even though it's the Falls Church paper is distributed in North Arlington primarily, North and Central, closest to Falls Church, I do have a little bit of a North Arlington bias. This has been noted, so I've been working hard to offset that by uh, going to South Arlington more often, getting good. There's a lot of good stories down there. Of course, it's an important part of our, our county. Uh, Arlington uh, is an unusual part of Virginia, uh, going way back to the Civil War. It was the, the only jurisdiction that did not vote for secession uh, during the, the vote in 1860. Uh, it lost its elected school board in 1952 when it uh, uh, favored the desegregation and the, the powers of being Richmond did not, and that went on in the courts and the massive resistance movement throughout the 50s. Um, you know, I consider uh, Arlington to be southern enough so that people like me can remember the uh, legal and cultural racism when it was a living, breathing phenomenon. But it was northern enough so that the deep south for us was still considered pretty exotic. So, uh, I like to typify Arlington as having a certain earnestness. Uh, the, the leaders and community activists, it reminds me of the characters on the TV show Parks and Recreation. <laughs> They, they challenge authority, but they and they're, have their own experts. Uh, they never quite think to get things right, but you know, it's good examples of these experts uh, when they uh, this battle over the Williamsburg Middle School uh, stadium lights. There's a few people here that know know that issue closely, and the county had all this scientific research on the lighting uh, effects and impact, and they had the neighbors got their own experts to contradict it. And the same thing happened when the fire department did all this research on response times for fire engines when they were trying to decide whether to move the, the Falls Hill Fire Station over towards Old Dominion and leave. And uh, damn it, the neighbors didn't come up with their own uh, tests showing that those response times were not measured accurately. Um, most interesting parts of the book, in my humble view, uh, I like to think of as the opening chapter where a nice trip to uh, the eastern shore of Virginia where we saw the original Arlington plantation. The Custis family uh, established it, came over from England 300 years ago, and they still have ruins and plaques about that, but it's sort of off the beaten track. Uh, uh, the tree in Arlington where George Washington uh, used as a survey uh, uh, landmark, uh, the actual stump of the tree is in the Carlin Springs Library. But the site of the tree is hidden away in the Long Branch Nature Center uh, path in the middle of the woods, and the marker is illegible. It's so old and marred. Uh, so I was hoping, after I wrote about it, that the county would uh, update it and upgrade it. We'll see. Uh, uh, similarly, uncommemorated uh, landmark is uh, Powhatan Springs, which uh, it's right there on Wilson Boulevard behind the Dominion Hills pool, and there's a skating, you know, skateboard park there called Palace Hands Ray. And that, uh, it's sort of uh, in disrepair, too. And, uh, you know, supposedly Chief Palatan himself was there two, two three hundred years ago. And, uh, it's, um, it used to be much more uh, well taken care of than it is now. Uh, a couple other highlights. Uh, I did some investigative reporting where I found that Arnold Palmer was indeed married in Arlington, Virginia, the golfer, and the biographies of Arnold Palmer and his organization's website have had it wrong, that they had him having been married in Falls Church. And uh, it's easy to see how they kind of lose that distinction. <laughs> we like to show people stand up and show off our local. Uh, but basically, when I started researching this, I had to figure out that he eloped. He and his wife eloped in 1953, and he was not nationally famous quite yet. He was a professional golfer. He was a star at Wake Forest College. But, so uh, 
they just pulled over. They just drove south from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and pulled over at Lutheran Resurrection Church on the Boulevard. The church has the actual signature in the registry to prove that. So I had to straighten out this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did uh, enjoy uh, interviewing Nicholas Hammond, who's a, who was in the class of 67 at Yorktown High School, who was a professional actor while he was in junior high and high school, and he performed in The Sound of Music, the original in 1955, and performed in The Lords of Flies, uh, even earlier than that. And he's still a professional actor, he's in Australia. He went on to play Spider-Man on TV and all these other roles, but he, he gave me some good reminiscences about his memories of Arlington. And uh, I, I end with some ghost stories, uh, which people are usually reluctant to discuss, and uh, I try and egg them on. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, stand by. All right, that looks good. <laughs> An interesting book and lots of good information there, and uh, yeah. a lot of really interesting old places around here in Arlington that uh, you didn't know existed. The no. hidden treasures, right? Thanks to Charlie Clark for for uh, exactly. doing that for us. He's the author of the book. Yeah. Hidden History, is it? Hidden History? <laughs> Hidden History. It's Hidden a, History. It's a great book, <laughs> Hidden History. Hidden History of Arlington. <laughs> Hidden History of Arlington. So thanks, Charlie Clark, for that. Uh, okay, we got to move on down the road. Have we come up with a name yet for Greenzilla down there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. We do need yeah. a better name, I think. Right. Oh. He's teaching how to write his name, but he can, he can also... He took my phone. Nice yeah, let's hold a contest. Let's name this little his guy. Name Greenzilla. 55 plus guide, Don't right, Craig? Your 55 plus guide. You can get one mm -hmm. delivered to your very door there by <laughs> joining them for, you know, 30 bucks or whatever. And the penguins. And the penguins. March Don't of the penguins. The penguins. Okay, we got to go. That's a wrap. We're getting to wrap up here. Thanks for watching this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. Have a safe week. Next week, if you're there, we'll be here and we'll try it all again. Bye-bye. <laughs>